So Greg Rutherford, Olympic 2012 champion, gold medalist in long jump. And I remember that Super Saturday, along with most of the nation, I think, <laughs> as being a golden moment in British athletics and a golden moment of the Olympics. And here we are now in Guernsey, outside the high performance gym, part of the high performance program for the athletes who are really aiming to emulate what you've just achieved. I want to talk to you about the support that you have and the support services that help get you where you are now. Yeah, I think Again, a lot of people see the athlete and see the athlete doing well and just obviously a lot of times just assume oh, I've just gone out there and done incredibly well. But the build up to any major championships and anybody doing well in sport involves so many different people. So you have your, your main coach. And for me, I was incredibly lucky and happy Dan Paff, who yeah. in my eyes is one of the greatest coaches in the world and probably is regarded as one of the best coaches in the world as it stands. And then around that, I then had a guy called Jerry Ramajita from, from Canada, who is a fantastic therapist in the way of getting my body fit, healthy, and, and ironing out any, any issues that were there. But then around that, I then had another guy, Andy Burke, who was also on board, who was also helping keep my body together. And then around that, you then have a guy Kearney, a guy who was doing oh, my yeah. nutritional side of things. And then around that, you'd also dip into other things as psychologists who yes. would help out. And, yes. and again, I had a fantastic guy in Paul Bryce, who, who was basically there filming loads of my sessions, helping me with Dan in order to improve. So a team of one long jumper ends up becoming a team of nearly 10 people yes. just to make sure everything works and everything's on, on the straight and narrow and, and going in the right direction to do well. Yeah. So there's no athlete out there, I don't think, who doesn't have these people around them who are hugely important and fundamental in mm. elite sport. You mentioned some very significant names there. Paul Bryce, I recognise from biomechanics yeah. and so on, and some world-recognised coaches. If they worked in isolation, I'm guessing that it wouldn't be quite as effective. So Definitely. how did they work as a team? The greatest thing about everybody that I had within my team is that they all spoke to each other and they all had yeah. heavily, well, heavy involvement in the way of be that via email, via, via meeting up, us all having meetings together and being open to learning. Like, mm. This is a key thing I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't take on board is that everybody's learning. It's not just the athlete, everybody is. Now, if I'm doing something and, and Paul Bryce picks up on it on a camera, he can then relay that to Dan and Dan can then see that and then change things around that. If my body's not moving in the right direction, Dan might see something, send you over to Jerry. It's basically mm. harmonizing all of these fantastic areas which you need, bringing yes. them together yeah. and unifying them. Yeah. And I think a unified ship in that way works incredibly well. If you, if you just try and sort of shield yourself and, and, and not believe in, in other aspects of it, then yes. it's not going to work. You're going to find an issue somewhere and it's going to fail. And, and I was very, very lucky that all of the guys I had involved mm. were willing to talk, willing to learn off of each other Fantastic. and help me. What a great support team you've got. Well, Guernsey Sports Commission's put assembling a team and has assembled a team of experts who are exactly, as you say, like-minded in the sense that they're willing to share. Uh, the sum of the holes, greater than the individual parts, yeah. uh, and always looking to learn, lots of opportunities. We have an annual conference which kicked off last year for all coaches, the first time that coaches and support staff came together, over 100 people came for a three-day conference. So we have that right ethos, there's no egos, it's all about the athlete in the middle of all of this and how they can help, and it's, it's an absolute joy to see this working. So the Commonwealth Games team are preparing, the high-performance athletes are preparing as well. I'm guessing also that instead of a hierarchical structure that you sometimes see in management and companies where you've got a line down and then people feeding off, yeah. it's almost like a circle around you. Yeah. And people dip in as the most important person dip out. So yeah, if you're injured, yeah. then medics come in and physios yeah. and then they dip out when you're yeah. healthy. And exactly. Is that how it works? Yeah, hugely. And mm. the, the interesting thing with that circle is that effectively it never <coughs> breaks in the way of people sort of disappear. So even when you're fit and healthy, you still have your therapists watching to make sure things are still in line. So, for example, a huge thing that I'd have at your training pretty much every single day with Jerry and Andy would be if my hips were ever so slightly out of, out of alignment, all they'd do, just two minutes, just to move you yeah. around a little bit, get yeah. it working again, so you can perform at the highest level in that training yeah. session or competition. Fantastic. And that's hugely important because effectively you're then creating injury prevention rather than just fixing injuries every time. Yeah. And that became something that was hugely important for training because you train more, yeah. you feel better, you're not having the same issues, and all of a sudden you're on the track more, which then shows in the performances when you go mm. and compete. Mm. So that circle is fundamental and has to stay constantly connected and yes. everybody has to be in the loop at all times yes. and when that happens again you harmonize in a way that means that the athlete can perform at the highest level mm. and also the athlete has confidence because yeah. ultimately it's never easy going out into an olympic stadium or, or a stadium for a world championships commonwealth games or anything mm. and 100 percent believing that you can do well but if you've got everybody mm. on your side and mm. you know it's worked as well as it possibly can 
that fills you with confidence yeah. and then you can go out there and just perform yeah. and that's ultimately what the athlete has to do. Well I remember you as a 17 year old yeah. uh, when we first met and we were putting services in to support you talking to a group of school children about your ambition to win an Olympic gold medal funnily yeah. enough yeah. all those years ago and it came it came to fruition yeah but I also know that you had a whole series of injuries and so on that you had to deal with which you used your team around and the team was evolving these athletes now here are training, they're going to go through some of those yeah. things. What, what advice would you give now to our high performance athletes on the programme I, I think, as your journey has commenced? I think commenced? for any high performance athlete, they've got to obviously understand that they are very good at what they do. Mm. Now, if you wouldn't become a high performance athlete unless you are good at what you do, an injury is a byproduct of training hard and competing at a high level. Now, there's no getting away from it. There will be no Olympic champion or no champion of anything in the world who's not suffered major injuries. And it's about how you approach that injury. If you go doom and gloom and this is the end, be all and end, oh, it's all finished, whatever else, that's then going to get on top of you. And that injury is going to become worse because your body just will not be dealing with it as well as you possibly could. The mind is hugely important in any form of recovery. And if you can stay positive and again, have faith in the team. I was very lucky. I had fantastic physios, fantastic trainers, everything working with me. Now, if you surround yourself with the same scenario, yeah. then you have to have faith in what they say. You have to do as effectively what they say and also have a level of in, in, internal analysis of knowing what is working. So for example, if you turn up and you say, something isn't right, you have to be able to relay that to the people in order to be able to fix it, yeah. to, to carry on. But ultimately, injuries happen. It happens yeah. to everybody. It's just how you approach Stay it. Stay focused, work through Completely. it. It's going to happen. Exactly. To, to compete injury-free is very rare, actually, yeah, isn't it? Very, yes. very <laughs> I know next to nobody who, who hasn't had yeah. some level of, of injuries yeah. or pains at some point. And again, deal with it the right way, and they do go quicker. Well, the commission team is absolutely committed to being world-class in what they do Fantastic. to surround the athletes. So, Brilliant. Greg Rudford, again, many thanks for spending Thank time you. with us. Thank Appreciate you. It.